So the uh, the Zera Shimshon on, has a, a number of pieces on Megillus Esther, and here on page Tav Kuf Chav Dalet, towards the bottom right, he's dealing with the Gemara's question of why Esther invites Haman to the party. Wouldn't it have been better if it was just her and Ahasuerus and she could have told him about this evil plot of this? So the Gemara gives a number of answers to this question. One of the answers that the Gemara gives was that Esther was trying to make a point to Hashem of how far the Jewish people, people have fallen, that this is what it has come down to. Her needing to flatter and show honor to the Haman Harasha. So here he continues at the bottom of page Tavkuv Chavdal on the right side. Amra Esther Baruch So what Esther is saying to Hashem is, Afalpi Shani Mekareves Atzmi Besafik Sakana Lavo Alamalach Asher Lokadas. You see how far that I have to go here that she has to bring herself into a situation of a questionably endangering her life because she came to the king without permission. She could have made a request and taken some time. They had 11 months mm -hmm. until they would need to actually do something. But Mordechai says, no, you need to go right now when he was insisting. And so she put her life in danger. And she says, Hainu Mishum Ki Ein Ozer, that's because we have no other way of being saved. The Hainu Vekasher Avaditi Avaditi. And that's what she means. If I'm lost, I am lost, meaning that we have no other option. So now he says, Ukadeshal Yomruha Olam. So everyone is going to read this story of the Megillah, is going to say, Shikala Nais Bali Yisra, Bazachus Shal Esther, Bazachus Mardachai. Everyone's going to say, why were the Jewish people saved? Because Esther risked her life for the sake of the Jewish people. And Mordechai uh, was a tzaddik and didn't go to the party or didn't partake of the party and he didn't bow to Haman. So everyone's going to say that the reason why the Jewish people were saved was because of Mordechai and Esther. What's the problem with that? The problem with that is in the future, when we are in trouble... No more We're going to say, well, <laughs> let's find ourselves a Mordechai and Esther and let them save us. <laughs> but we will make the mistake of thinking that the fasting and the prayers didn't do anything. And the truth is, how much is that really a part of the story? When you retell the Purim story, how much do you talk about when the Jewish people gathered in the shuls and they were fasting and they were praying? Maybe you'll give it a brief mention, but in, in the majority of the story, it's all about Mordechai and Esther. And this is going to close off the possibility of the Jewish people doing teshuva in the future. So he says, and maybe, you know, you wonder, why is it that this particular line is one of the most famous lines in the Megillah, um, the, the one he's about to quote. And even though it does kind of fit with the theme of Purim, which is where everything's upside down, but it's the other way around. Everything's upside down because of this line in the Megillah. So it says, It was all um, turned over. That the Jewish people... They took control over mm -hmm. their enemies. So the Zara Shimshon just puts out an amazing shot right here. <laughs> he says the merit of Mordechai and Esther was only sufficient to stop the evil decree leading to the destruction of the Jewish people. Yisrael. <laughs> Because the Jewish people did enough fasting and teshuva, they got added this extra miracle that things were overturned. And this made me think about, when I read this, it made me think about why is it that um, the Jewish people were under the power in the tw middle of the 20th century, we, or in the first half. We were under the power of the Nazis 
in theory, there was a possibility, according to the system of nature, that they should go through their final solution and there would be no more Jews. Their plan was they were going to take over Europe, they were going to take over the entire world and find and chase down every single Jew <coughs> in the world. And even though it took six million, and that's a separate discussion, the Jewish people were saved. Like Adosh Baruch Hu gave the war to the, to the allies. allies, and the Germans were defeated. But we did not get to see justice performed against our enemies. In fact, most of the people who were caught and arrested and tried were given um, minor slaps on the wrists, um, if they served a decade, that would have been a big deal. <laughs> they all went with their, we were just following orders, excuse, we were just part of the machine, excuse. And even with eyewitnesses, many of them, uh, many of them escaped and lived out their lives in hiding and uh, um, relative comfort, meaning when I say that, I mean their hiding was better than the hiding of the people in the bunkers in Europe. They, they, they had an entire country of Argentina. Or, and Wisconsin. And Wisconsin, yeah. Um, so, uh, and why is that? So according to the Zerah Shimshon, he, the Zerah Shimshon is saying because there are two separate accounts. <coughs> there's the account which brings the salvation or the saving of the Jewish people and there's an entirely separate account that allows the Jewish people to see justice and vengeance taken over their enemies. And he, he said, the Zerah Shimshon says that Mordechai and Esther had the merit of saving the Jewish people. Let's not take that away from them. But that's all that would have happened is the king would have somehow allowed for the return of the letters, even though the letters can't be returned, but new letters would have saved the Jewish people. The fact that the Jewish people were allowed to fight and destroy their enemies, he says that was directly as a result of Yisrael, because of the repentance and the fasting the Jewish people did, they also got the extra miracle of a Nahafochu, which I guess we didn't merit in our days. The Shema Mina, he says, because this tells you, shows the Teshuvah Mi'avo, that they repented out of love. The Kaimalam, we have a a ruling, Teshuva out of love will change the sins, even if they were intentional, into merits. And that's what happened when the Jewish people did Teshuva, they received this merit again. And in order to allude to this idea, um, that when you do Teshuva, you turn over, turn over sins into merits, which will affect that in your life, you're, it's turned over that you get the power over your enemies. Almost as if, when you sing, you're not really talking about so much the fact that the war was overturned and we defeated our enemies. That those words Venohafach really means we changed. We turned ourselves around. And as a result of that, things around us turned around. In order to allude to that, everything we do on Purim is the exact opposite of what the situation was before things got turned around. <coughs> On Purim we have to eat and drink. Why? Because it all started with the Jews attending the party of Achashverosh. That they benefited from the meal. As our sages tell us. And the biggest problem was that the Jewish people were drinking. And drinking. And drinking. So if we were to just have been saved... Then we would have a party where we would specifically not drink wine. But because it all got turned over, it all got flipped, now we have to actually take that same wine and turn it around. Right. They were drawn after wine. All the parties that this Russia made, that Achashverosh made, were all about wine. As it says, in the verse, Kitov Leva Melech the heart of the king was good in his wine. 
by Yomer HaMalach by Mishdi Ayayin. Lechein, that's why Chayev Inish the Besume Bepurya. That's why a person has to drink wine on Purim. So why do you think um, the uh, Talmud Nazis? Why would he say it? Why would he not wipe out? Um, what was the merit of whom? So you could either say there was the merit of the righteous, of the generation, or you can say that it was the merit of all the people who died al Kiddush Hashem, or, or you could say that we had the merit of the promise to our forefathers that Hashem would not allow us to be, be destroyed. But it wasn't as a result of some mass movement by the Jewish people. In fact, um, you could probably say that strangely enough, that the wars fought by the Jewish people 30 years later did a better job of kickstarting the tshuva movement than the troubles that they faced in, the, in that generation. I just have one comment. There was sort of a reversal is that three years later you had the state of Israel. Right. Which is a sort of a miraculous thing, you know. Are they no, no, we had other, we had other things, but we didn't have the vengeance. We never saw, we never saw our enemies um, punished and suffering for what they did. That we're specifically focused on that point. And he's saying that requires something new. You can be saved, and you can have other miracles happen to you. That's that's for sure. But there's something about seeing the vengeance upon your enemies, what and that just never happened. What about Ike? Individuals. We had Eichmann, and then there were um, the um, uh, eleven people at the Nuremberg trial. And, but th- they were actually killed. But we're talking about thousands and thousands of people. And uh, if those people who were caught and tried would have spent even twenty to thirty years in prison, many of them came out after five years, completely free, um, living to their sentence. Interesting with the wine. I wonder if you can speculate that you know such focus on wine. You know, tell us how deep Purim is, and it's at the level of your soul. Anyways, uh, that everything that seems apparent isn't really. It's, uh, right, uh, it's the world. Well, the, that we talked about that a little yesterday in, the, the, in terms of the wine representing the secrets. Right, so he he's actually going to go further with the wine, which we'll see. Is um, this quotation about the king not using the name Achashverosh, but the king being? joyous with wine and so on. Is this a source for why we have um, wine at Kiddush for Shabbos and Yontem? This isn't a source, but it would fit with that. Uh, we, we, we do Kiddush, but we do that with the wine because of the verse in Tehillim, the Yayin Yasamach Levav Enosh, and things like that. But this certainly would add, if you learn that Amalek refers to Hashem, and you see Le- mm-hmm. Yom Ashvi, Ketov Lev Amalech Bayayin on the seventh day, right. right? So that you could certainly feel free to dash on that, especially this Purim. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's correct. He's saying. Right, he's saying that's one of the reasons why we don't necessarily learn as much Torah. And Gemara says we're supposed to uh, take away from Torah <laughs> learning and for the sake of the Megillah and, and, and for Purim. So he's saying because, uh, because maybe since we drink, you know, you're not supposed to pass in Shilohs when, when you've had anything to drink and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that. But, but I'll tell you, I've been to places where you know, the great Sadiqim, once they start drinking, and All that comes out is just the oh, Torah, the right, that the Torah that's been kept secret. If anyone reads the the writings of Rav Yitzchak Hutner on on Purim, um, so they they uh, they transcribed some of the Torah which he said after having a few, and by a few I mean uh, a, a few more than a few. Uh, it's incredible, incredible Torah. Like where where what planet was he on on Purim that he had access to this kind of. And, you know, throughout, throughout the generations, there have been many. So sometimes, like the doctor was saying, like Nero was saying, <laughs> but, just, but on Purim, we focus more on the inebriating beverage, uh, meaning we do schnapps and other things, more than just specifically yain. Well, Is Purim, that a mistake? Pur, yeah, Purim day should be only wine. Uh-huh. Purim day. For the actual Suda of Purim, we should be drinking wine. So he says, uh, obviously you're Yotze with other things, but Lekatchila you should. 
Umasha Amru. So then the question is, okay, so we have to drink. But what's with this strange shear that we give for the drinking? Adela Yada, Bein Aror, until you can't tell the difference between Aror Haman and Baruch Mordechai, meaning you start to confuse them and you start saying Aror Mordechai and Baruch Haman. What, 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 why is that the measure? So, Kashav, Em Yomar, Aror Mordechai, U Baruch Haman, Yomar Sheker. He says, that's not true. If you say that Mordechai should be cursed and Haman should be blessed, at that point you're speaking lies. Shazay Adar Abba Chalko B'Kedusha. V'zeh Chalko B'Tuma. Mordechai's place is in holiness, and Haman's place is in impurity. V'atorah Amr, the Torah says, Midvar Shekhar Tirchak. You know, people ask, well, how could, how could this person be getting drunk? You know, what if... This person, when he gets drunk, he behaves like this, he behaves like that. Then we say, well, if that person's misbehaving when they get drunk, they should not be getting drunk. That's not the purpose here. Um, so he's saying, if, if the drunkenness is going to lead you to lies, then that's not a good thing. Alafisha Amruzal. So he says, an original chat, nobody else says this. Alafisha Amruzal, at least not that I've seen. But he asked there no say schein. Esther found favor in the eyes of all. And this was one of the miracles of Purim where we don't make such a big deal about, about this and we probably should when we tell the story make a bigger deal about this because as we know, Megillus Esther is all about hidden miracles. And we talk about the miracles of Mordechai being in the right place at the right time and Haman and Achashverosh. But one of the miracles was that Achashverosh had this desire to please Esther to make sure she was happy because there was no dissent anywhere towards Esther. Everyone, everyone liked Esther. Seems from the way that the Megillah writes it. Even Haman liked Esther. And you would think that an Amaleki would have some intrinsic, uh, you know, something inside that really wants to make him hate every Jew. Even he should have picked up that she was a Jew. It would be but, like CNN and Fox agreeing on something. Right. right. <laughs> so it says, <laughs> he asked there, no says the eha. So says the Gemara, how is that possible? Oh, I was just going to say, if you get so inebriated, you just fall asleep, and at that point in time, you don't know the difference. <laughs> well, there are some who say that, but you know, that's <laughs> that you could just fall asleep. <laughs> oh, that's that's the next line, exactly. Yeah. So Dakhnir quotes the Gemara. What does the Gemara say? <laughs> that this was a pageant. Uh, today, they also have similar such pageants in the world where they take a woman from each country. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you personally think about her, but each country, each person in that country wants that the woman from that country should win. Why? Because somehow it reflects on me. Right? It, it says something about me. So the Gemara tells us that the system for the way this miracle worked was that Esther her face was this kind of blend of every possible ethnicity, ethnicity in the world, mm -hmm. and everyone was completely convinced that she was one of theirs. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, She kept it a secret, and it became a kind of game, you can imagine, across the uh, tabloids about uh, f trying to find where, where had Esther been, who is this Esther, where in the world is Carmen San Diego, but where for in the world is... So the people were... And everyone looked at her and said, look, the eyes, the eyes, she's got to be Japanese. The other one says, no, she's got to be uh, um, from, uh, from Germany. Right? You see that, I don't know what, what... So that's the way it was. That was the way the miracle worked. So he says, So there are 70 nations, and then the Jewish people. So part of the story of the reason why the Jewish people were saved, and the reason why we have Purim, is a result of 70 lies that were told. So we drink wine. Which is 70. And we have to add one lie to the mix. Lirmos le shivim shkarim she amru kala shivim umos to commemorate the seventy lies spoken by the seventy nations. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we say ba aru mardechai baruch haman. It's not a lie if you're saying it as an official term. So if you're if you're not saying it as a statement, but you're saying it as a result of a lie. And what I mean is like this: If let's say I was to say to you, 
please tell me a lie. And you say, this room is, uh, the walls are black. That you're not lying. You're telling me the truth because I asked you to tell me a lie. So he's saying that since the whole miracle occurred through the 70 nations telling lies, we drink the cup of wine, Yayim being the 70, and we speak a lie to commemorate the lie spoken by the 70 nations in order to remember and remind ourselves of the miracle that this woman looked like, that Esther looked like all 70, and that's what allowed everyone to love her, and that's an important piece in the puzzle, and we cannot discount any individual tiny piece of the puzzle. Amazing, Chef. Is the yayin being 70 one of the reasons why we don't drink wine of other people, of other nations. I know it's supposed to be because we oh, you can tie mix that in. with that's the... Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. nice to separate ourselves. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. But that becomes the separation between us and the 70. Yeah, but you hear this is an amazing shot. You're supposed to tell the lie to commemorate all those lies. I don't understand the connection between Esther finding grace in the eyes of all people and the need to tell a lie. That's uh, What's the connection? Uh, there's... We're... I mean, but the need to tell a lie. Th there was a miracle that happened yes. that um, we're assuming, without um, going into all the details, that that's an important part of the story. The fact yes. that she was liked by everyone, which is why Hashverosh liked her, which is why even Haman likes her, which is why he makes the other party, when which is why um, the people listen to her. All these things come together because everybody liked her. And that's because everyone said she's from our country. So there were 70 lies spoken. Now we need to commemorate those 70 lies. So we, we drink the wine and tell an official lie. Not a real lie, but an official lie. Representative However, he takes this a little further. The idea is, which is an account of by itself. What they said is not really a lie. And what we mean is like this. If let's say, if let's say, um, someone says to you, instead of a lie, it's a mistake. They right, a mistake. Right, that's what he's going to say. Um, exactly. The, if someone says to you, who was the first person to enter this room this morning? And you say, it was me. And I say, no, no, you're mistaken. Because an hour before you came, there was someone else who came into this room. So you're a liar. You're not a liar. Based on the information I had, I told what I assumed was the truth. And that's not, that's, that's not called Sheker Gomer. That's not a real lie. See, he says, Shema Sha'amru Heim Lo Haya Sheker Gomer wasn't a real lie. Sharei Lechal Echad Nidamis Loku Maso, because it really looked like she was from their country. Va'anusim Misvarasim Hai, and they were therefore mistaken. Exactly the word that George used. So he says, so you also, you can't tell a real lie. You can't just get up there and say, Aru Mordechai Baruch Haman. You've got to make a mistake. So, Afkan, Kishiyoma Baruch Haman, when you say Baruch Haman, Kishiyashikar, so only if you're drunk, Yannis Bedaita, could you call it a mistake? Amazing. Furthermore, a little, a little deeper, Vegam Eina Shekhar Gomer, it's not even a lie. Shahare Haman Garam Teshuva Yisrael. The fact is that Haman was the cause for bringing repentance to the Jewish people. So there is a truth to you. didn't say Haman is a tzaddik. You just said he should be blessed. Because the truth is, his actions gave us Purim. Um, Mordechai, and the fact is that Mordechai, who ben Shimi, we know Mordechai ben Yar ben Shimi, so who is Shimi? Um, so according to the Gemara, Shimi was the one... Who ca cursed David Amalach? She killed us, David. Uksiv, and then says, "Kill us, chinam lo savo." We carry in lo savo. It says that uh, a, an empty curse shall not come, but we say it means it'll come back to the person who threw the curse. So the truth is that Mordechai does own a curse to a certain extent. Because his forefather made a curse? Right, because it comes back on the descendants. Uh, in the Megillah, in fact, the Gemara actually says that. Amra Knesset Yisrael, the Jewish people were complaining. Ru'uma Asa li Yehuda, look what Yehuda did to me. The Ilukat le David le Shimi, had David killed Shimi, lo have misyalid Mordechai, the Mordechai wouldn't have been born, the Garam Tsar le Yisrael, because he brought us the trouble by not bowing to Haman. Meaning the Jewish people, when Mordechai didn't bow and the decree happened, the Jewish people said, if only David had killed Shimi. That's what the people were saying. So you see that the concept, so he's saying that is a, a certain amount of Arur Mordechai, which was part of the story. 
That's why it says at the end that Mordechai found favor with most of the people, even after that. They st still might have resented that. Okay, good. So now he shifts in and he says, now let's cover the rest of the mitzvahs of Purim. Haman was willing to give 10,000 talents of silver. There's some calculations that are made today as to how much money that is. It is a ridiculous amount of Fills money. Fills a school bus, I was told. When I was... Fills a school bus? Yeah. yeah. Of, of silver? Yeah. Right. So, um, why they use that, I have no idea. Why? why? Why would he give that much money away? Wasn't that like the taxes that they would... Like who's covering whatever their taxes? The shkalim, yeah, that's uh, but but just from a practical reason, like how, how how could he do another it? Another thing too. Well, just from a simple shot reason, hatred. deep hatred. Oh. Deep hatred oh. is enough that the person is willing to. How much more money did he have than that? If let's say a person has a billion dollars, even if they have a billion dollars, you can't spend a, a, a billion dollars in a lifetime unless you. Unless you burn the money, and you can burn the money by using it too, but to actually spend it, um, you can't spend a billion dollars in a lifetime. Now, if someone has, we're assuming Haman has a billion dollars, and he comes over to Achashverosh and says, "I'll write you a check for one billion dollars. Why don't you make it like ten million? The king would have given it for that." He has such deep hatred that he wants the king to understand. I'm giving you everything. I'm giving what I'm all in. I'm all in. Ooh. So he says, we have to do v'nahafachu. So he says, that's why ain medaktikim b'ma'ez purim. Am purim, we give, you give tzedakah am purim, there's no checking people out. You do not check green cards, you don't, am purim, you do not inspect people, you don't ask people what they're, what they're collecting for, you don't look into people, you just give, 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 give. And if they're fakers, give them too. Uh, but that, because that's the halachas, it says in Shulchan Aruch. And the reason is because we have to undo that pure giving of Haman, which came without any thought and system and logic. It says that Achashverosh sent out gifts, Shadi Pardash, Nivila Galila. Basically, it's, the Gemara tells us that Achashverosh said to Esther, he said, I'm sending all gifts to all my friends. Who would you like me to send to? Because he was trying to find out where she was from. She wouldn't reveal. He sent out gifts to all the ministers so that she would admit who she is. So we have to send gifts as well. We have to send also gifts to our friends and uh, donations to the poor. To reveal the miracle of Hashem. Because as we said before, if people would have known who Esther was, they would have all been jealous of her. There would not have been this love everywhere. And she didn't think of that. She wasn't doing it for that reason. She was just doing it because Mordechai said to her. And so she was following orders, Mordechai, Mordechai. And it made so much sense for her to try to make friends with the king by telling the king all about her. And the fact that she was of royal descent would have made things even better. But Mordechai said she shouldn't tell. And it turns out that the saving of the Jewish people is the fact that everyone loves her. So he's sending out gifts. Kamosha Asa Haman Lavashti. Vashti was a Babylonian and they didn't want Vashti. Haman tried to get her killed. If it was also a Madish Bashas Xer, she would have been killed as well. It seems just I'm saying that Purim is the ultimate of the peak of the Gaula, a Havas Hinam, because that's when you should have the highest level to come. That's interesting, right? Because it, 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 it's interesting because that's really more associated usually with the second base of English. But yeah, here, yeah, so it's, we, we it's, right. Torah, so it's not so much because we had sinas chinam that we need to do avas chinam. It's more that the goyim had avas chinam for their thing that we have to show avas chinam. They were willing to give of themselves and give away. And he was sending out all these gifts. So we need to, we have to channel all of that towards the positive. Maybe that is why the failure of the second temple was because we didn't fulfill that obligation from the beginning of it Maybe. properly. Ah, that could be. So he says, our sages tell us that the, it should be Mishloach Manos is Shtei Manos You're supposed to give two portions to one person. 
You're supposed to give two items of food. There's different opinions about what they should be. There's no such uh, there's no such idea that it should be two brachas or anything like that. And certainly, it sh- um, doesn't necessarily need to be candies. In fact, I should just point this out once we're on the subject. The best way to perform the mitzvah of Mishlach Manos is to take two pieces of food from your Purim meal and to share it with someone else. That's really the best way to fulfill. To If you're ma- preparing food, if it's a piece of chicken and some rice, take that over and give that to someone else. That's the best way to perform. Everything else is does fall under the theme of trying to make friends with people, but manos does not mean items of food. Manos means portions, as if from the meal. Anyway, you're supposed to give two to one person. Ulevyonim matana achas leavyonachat. And matanas leavyonim, you have to give um, two, meaning you have to give one gift to one poor person twice. But you don't give two to one, you give one to one and then one to one. To another one. Right. So um, you have to give to poor people. Matanos laavyonim is two to two, meaning one to one. The fishachashverish dali karga, kasachashverish raised the taxes. I'm sorry, he lowered the taxes for certain individuals within, uh, you know, the one percent. And she still wouldn't reveal who she would want to be within that tax break. Shada Pardashni, then he sent gifts, and she still didn't reveal. So all the special people got gifts, and they got a reprieve on the taxes. So they got two good things. But the poor people, meaning those people in the areas that were freed from the taxes, only got one favor. They got a tax break. They got what they call it, uh, they sent out... Uh, a the refund? Um, no, there was a... When, when the president just sends everyone the check. That's a rebate. The, uh, well, a rebate is a payment back. Foolish. No, no, he sent a stimulus. 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 Tax credit? Yeah. A rebate. Is a rebate? Okay. Okay. So he says, in order to commemorate this, So you need to copy what Achishverosh did, which is to send gifts to your friends. And to give a general reprieve from taxes by giving poor people money. The old mitzvah little bush big day Shabbos v'yamtiv. The custom is that you wear nicer clothing on Purim. Now on Hanukkah there's no such mitzvah. You don't have to wear Shabbos clothes. And there's people who have this custom. But but on Purim specifically you're supposed to wear Shabbos clothes unless you're dressed up, of course. And the dressed up works with this even better. The answer is Lefisha Ha'isa Esther no says chain be'ene because the whole point about the clothing is because Esther found favor in the eyes of all the nations, which is why you dress up like different things and different people, or if you're, um, if you're not getting dressed up, you should wear your Shabbos clothes so that you will find favor in the eyes of all. So the best way to get dressed up would be to be a chameleon. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, there you go. Va'od l'fi shivatil bash Esther malchus, and also because it says that Esther donned herself with royalty. Which is the opposite of what Mordechai does, which is to wear the sack and the ash and the ashes. So he says the, the whole concept of dress up on Purim is all this concept of going from the sackcloth to the ashes to mm-hmm. Esther putting on royalty, which... which is why Haman said he had to put on the robes and everything because it's the hefech of the ashes. Right. Yeah. Oh, very good. That, so that's what happens. The king says to him, you bring Mordechai. So either you dress up or you wear your Shabbos clothes. Either way, you are commemorating the fact that the story is all about identities and concealment of identities and revelation of identities and keeping those secrets and revealing those secrets and finding favor in the eyes of all. Parts of the story we don't really focus on. He says all these um, mitzvahs are meant to bring you back to that point. Even the Mishloach Manus and the Matanus Lavionim is all because this was part of Achashverosh's scheme to try to get Esther to reveal this. Then he goes on, The Jewish people at the time of the decree, they didn't sleep. In fact, the king's sleep was disturbed. And we say, We mean the king below and the king above. And whatever that means, we don't understand this in our, in our words. But there's this concept 
of Hine la Yanum velo Yishan Shomer Yisrael, but on some level, um, there is this concept of sleep that happens up above, but not on this night. Balai la Hahu, it didn't happen. He says, Mishim Hacha on the Yoshu in the Urim Be'elu Alaylas, this is why you're supposed to stay up all night. On Purim night, besimcha v'sasan, happiness and joy, and uh, this is a uh, this is a custom which is kept by many people today, uh, especially by those who follow the more kabbalistic teachings, the Sephardim and the Hasidim. They will stay up all night Purim night and daven vasikin. It's one of the few uh, days where there's a greater obligation to daven vasikin. And uh, then they'll perform the mitzvahs in the morning and maybe take a nap during the day. The reason why that is, according to him, many struggle, why should we stay up all night? So he's saying it's to commemorate the Balai Lahahu, Nadir Da Melech. And if you need help staying up, you're welcome to come. We're having a party, everyone's invited. Mm-hmm. He says that because Haman makes the tree, for, or really the, the post, the, he makes for the sake of Mordechai, because he turned his ears towards the counsel of his wife, of Zeresh, and he listened to them, and he brought, bought into what they were suggesting. This is why we eat sweet things. We call them Haman's ears. And in Yiddish they're called Haman's tashin, which is... Um, more Haman's pockets, but even today in modern Hebrew they're called uh, as uh, Haman. They're called Haman's ears. So he's saying this is interesting because this means in the 1700s they actually were calling it Haman's ears. So they had, and that's why they're shaped like that. If it, it, I mean pockets works too, and some say he had a three uh, a hat with uh, three points on it. But the simple understanding is that the Haman tash is actually an ear. Because it was Haman's ears which led to his downfall. <laughs> it all comes down to the tree. Shekhar Afa Melech Alav, where the king becomes angry. Va'amar Taluhu Alav. So the whole, everything that's happening on Purim is meant to bring you back. And according to Zerah Shimshon, it's even better. Because he's saying that all these mitzvahs on Purim are meant to bring you back to those details which you tend to forget about. And he, according to him, it's all about the identity. And now he's coming back to Zeresh and her role. You think about it, Shoshana Yaakov, we say, Arama and Baruch Mordechai, um, Arura Zeresh, curse of the Zeresh. Why? What did she do? She suggested making a tree. He was asking, what should we do about Mordechai? He wanted to kill Mordechai anyway. And in fact, afterwards, when he's on the downfall, she says, oh, well, you started with the Jews. It sounds like she's jumping on the other bandwagon and the... Uh, and uh, joining with the Jewish people. She doesn't seem, and the answer is that no, she actually is a bigger deal than we realize. Natasha could also be reminding us of the same reason why we poke the Eved Ivri in a year, that you aren't doing the things that I told you to do. You know what I mean? The details. You're not. Right, right you're, so referring you're, you're, to our ears as well. Right, exactly. Very good, very good. So uh, I, I think I might have mentioned this that, but when, when Zeres said, to Homon, when it, it seems like he turned, he turned on him. He said, "Even misery, are you with him? If you're going to fight against the Jews, you're going to you're going to fall down, and you're, you're going to have no hope." But uh, it, I, I heard that from the Lubavitch Rabbi that he said that that no, she she was bad, she was evil throughout, and even this was an answer for him what to do. If now you're going to be with the Jews, you're going to have a big mapola, but fall down before them, beg them, they're soft people, they're going to give you a break, and you, you'll survive. She was giving him... Uh, yeah, a, you'll a, survive a, to fight another you, day. You'll just fight, yeah, right, just, so just maybe, fight. Maybe that would fit well with this. So he says, let's just finish this. Because Haman did this with his hands. And that's why we do actions. It's all about physical actions of joy and all the sillinesses which we do, all the Purim shtick which we do, is all meant to connect to the craziness of what Haman was willing to do. Then he finishes with this very deep concept, which I can't explain, but we'll just read it. For Od knows them tzedaka after Nachrim. In fact, when the uh, um, the Shulchan Aruch paskins, now not only do we give tzedaka to anyone, we don't ask questions, we don't inspect, we just give, give, and give. In fact, uh, you know, I've I've seen this myself. I've seen a person, um, um, there, you know, in, in it's a much bigger industry in New York, but it's done here as well. People go collecting. So there's a person 
who had an entire checkbook with printed checks and he was just tearing them off and handing them to each person that comes by all day long. So I don't know how much was written with each check, maybe $18, maybe $1,800, maybe $18,000, but or maybe it was the Gamachi of Purim, whatever, whatever the amount was that was being given, is just handing <laughs> checks all day long. And in fact, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins knows them tzedakah afla nachrim. You're supposed to give tzedakah even to Gentiles. On Purim, you don't ask such questions. So why? Why would we give tzedakah to Gentiles? It's our Yom Tev, it's our... It's, maybe we should ask him, you know, it depends what he's collecting for. The answer is, because we have the incense that was brought in the Beis HaMikdash, the Ketoros. And in that Ketoros, there were 11 spices. One of them was the Chalbana, which smelled terribly. It's Galbanum in English, although knowing that it's Galbanum doesn't really help identify it. It's some awful smelling thing, and we mixed it into the Ketoros. The chalbana has a bad smell. And it's counted amongst the samana of the ketoris. The chalbana gematria haman. Chalbana is 95, which is the same numerical value as haman. He says, you should know there's a very big secret here of why we have to somehow bring the chalbana back into... And that's why we give tzedakah to the Goyim. Besides the fact that he brought a great teshuva to the Jewish people, and so we want to recognize him, and that's why we end up saying, Baruch, Baruch Ahaman. So he says, all this is meant to show you, and I, um, I, I said this on Shabbos to someone, um, Purim is not an easy Yom Tov to keep. In fact, it is a lot easier to be spiritually uplifted on Yom Kippur where we fast all day and we daven all day. You have to come out of Purim uplifted, spiritually elevated, on a high, ready to serve Hashem on the highest level, to serve Hashem out of love like the Jewish people, to re-accept the Torah the way the Jewish people accept it. It's a service. It's an avoda. It's hard work that we need to do. And so the Zerashimshu is showing us how you can channel all these things meant to bring out in you a holiness, a greatness. May we merit that we should move from Baruch Haman and Ar Mordechai into recognizing Bruchem Kalat Tzadikim, Arurim Kalor And may we merit to see miracles like they did in those days. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. If someone wants